I'm Lars Svensson. I'm chairman of the Heart and Vascular and Thoracic Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. And I'm also the lead surgeon and the director for the Marfans and Connective Tissue Disorders Clinic. So today we're going to be talking about the operations that are done on the aortic root and particularly what uh, we often refer to as the modified David reimplantation operation. Now, it's important to know that there are different names for these procedures. There's valve preserving, where the valve is kept, and that can be either by the remodeling or reimplantation operation. There's also what's called valve sparing, which is also preservation of the aortic valve leaflets. And again, there's the reimplantation or the remodeling operation. What we're going to be talking about is the modification I introduced some 25 years ago, maybe a bit more, for the David reimplantation operation. The modification involves putting pledgets on the valve sutures that are used to implant the valve and the freed up aortic valve, what we call the left ventricular outro tract into a new plastic tube. In addition, the way I started doing it was using a what's called a Hagar's dilator and tying the sutures down around a Hagar's dilator that is the correct size for somebody's body surface area. In other words, size. And the importance of that is firstly, as far as pledges, I'd noticed that in some of Tyron David's early series, there were sutures that pulled through the mitral valve or other parts of the left ventricular outflow tract and caused fistulas, in other words, openings into other chambers of the heart or damaged surrounding areas. So the pledgets make it more secure. Secondly, patients who have these operations, it's not only the aortic root that increases in size, the annulus, which is where the leaflets are attached, also increases in size. And so the reason for the Hagar's dilator is to bring it down to a normal size. And I'm convinced that that is one of the reasons we have such good long-term results with the reimplantation operation that we modified. There are a number of benefits to keeping the native valve. Our long-term data shows that the valves uh, hold up very well. The risk of infection is much lower and the risk of stroke is much lower. In addition, if a young person needs uh, an operation for the aortic root or the aortic valve, they usually get offered a complex operation such as the Ross procedure or a mechanical valve. And with a mechanical valve, you then have to stay on Coumadin for the rest of your life. A biological valve, if that's what you choose, is going to fail, depending on somebody's age, anywhere between five and 10 years. And then one gets into a sequence of multiple procedures. So with a reimplantation operation, we know the long-term results are much better. So one of my trainees, one of the residents, has just analyzed uh, my own data, some 530 patients that I've done over the last 20 years. And there were no deaths in that series. And in detail, she analyzed 491 patients that we had long-term follow-up. And 96% of those patients still had a good functioning valve that hadn't required a reoperation at 15 years after surgery. So in other words, the other way to look at this, if 100 patients had the operation, only four of those patients needed another operation within 15 years of having the modified reimplantation operation. Patients with uh, connective tissue disorders, we did an analysis of that a couple of years ago. 214 patients, with reimplantation operations, the modification, and there were no operative deaths. 
and the freedom from reoperation at 12 years was uh, 95%. So the reoperation really holds up very well long term. In patients with bicuspid valves, which is about 1 to 2 percent of the population, the ideal operation for somebody who has enlarged aortic root and a bicuspid valve that's leaking is really not clearly defined. For patients who have stenosis, calcium buildup on their bicuspid valves and enlarged root, those patients we go ahead and do a composite valve root replacement, so-called bentol operation. In patients with a leaking valve and enlarged root, our data would suggest that the reimplantation operation is probably the best way to go. Our data also suggests that the difference is not at this stage significant between the three leaflet valves and two leaflet valves, the bicuspid valves. They're holding up pretty well. But we know from other research that bicuspid valves are abnormal and they will over time break down. We do do a lot of also remodeling operations for bicuspid valves, but I think on the whole, the reimplantation operation is probably the better way to go for patients with bicuspid valves. For patients who come to us, there are those patients who have symptoms before the operation and those who don't. The symptoms are related to the aortic valve leaking. And so shortness of breath can occur. Chest pain is pretty uncommon as is dizziness. That's much more common with a, for a patient who has aortic valve stenosis, in other words, narrowing of, of the valve. Occasionally, patients may have palpitations from the leaking valve or the big left ventricle. Atrial fibrillation can occur, but it's also uncommon. That's more related to the mitral valve. Now, in the patients who don't have symptoms, in those patients, the things that we look for are the size of the left ventricle and if the left ventricle is beginning to deteriorate or the lung functions are beginning to deteriorate. If that's occurring, then we recommend uh, surgery. Now, there's also the group of patients who have enlarged aortic root, and particularly in the patients who've got a family history of aortic dissection, that we will operate before they develop symptoms or signs of a fading heart. So one of the formulas we use to recommend surgery is we take the cross-sectional area of the aortic root divided by the patient's height in meters, and if that ratio is more than 10, then we recommend surgery. So that takes into account the fact that patients who are shorter may, and we've shown this, have a higher risk of aortic dissection than somebody who's tall with equivalent size aortic root. So that comes into the calculation also. So for most patients, when they get up to about five centimeters or so uh, for the aortic root, we recommend surgery. We've shown in patients with bicuspid valves, the enlarged aortic root is a higher predictor of developing aortic dissection and problems than the ascending aorta size. Now, if somebody has a family history of aortic dissection and say Marfan's or Lowe's Dietz or uh, any of the other connective tissue disorders, then we often recommend surgery at a smaller size. And that may be then at 4.5 centimeters. There is a group of patients that we've been looking at who have severe aortic valve regurgitation and not particularly large, enlarged aortic root in those patients, we found we can successfully repair the aortic valve in a lot of those patients and do a reimplantation operation for them, even though the root's not very big and the results look pretty good long term. Now, the question sometimes is asked what is the likelihood that we can repair and keep 
a, a valve by the reimplantation and the modifications we use. And we, in about a quarter of the patients, will do repairs on the leaflets at the time of the reimplantation to keep the valve. So, for patients who have a three leaflet valve, I tell them that mostly 95% or better, we can keep the valve for you, unless there are big holes in the leaflets. And that's unusual that they're so bad that we cannot keep the, the valves. Occasionally, there are what we call fenestrations. As long as they're not too big, we can usually keep the valve. The other group of patients are the patients who have calcium at the annulus where the leaflets attach to the aorta. Those patients, we generally do not do a, a reimplantation operation. I don't consider age particularly an uh, exclusion. I, a couple of weeks ago, had a patient who was 81 years old. She really wanted to keep her valve, and we did a reimplantation operation for her, and she did great. So, age is not really a factor. And we've done uh, kids also done the reimplantation operation for them too, and so age is really not a strong factor. Uh, certainly in the elderly patients, often we find the calcium and so they may not be candidates then for a modified reimplantation operation. As far as whether we can do the operation or not, the echo before surgery is a very good indication, but we can only be sure at the time of surgery, particularly in the patients with, who have severe leaking valves, whether that's due to big holes in the leaflets or if it's just from the leaflets being pulled apart by the enlarged annulus or aortic root. And so the final decision on whether we can keep a valve and repair it is related to what we find at the time of surgery. You'll see on heartvalvesurgery.com, there is a section about the reimplantation operations, first described by Tyrone David from Toronto, and then also the modification that I made many years ago. Most people, I think, now are using modifications of the original operation, and even the, many of the well-known surgeons who do this operation now are using the modification with plegated sutures and Hagar's dilators because we think that holds up much better and it takes away the complexity of trying to figure out if the valve can be preserved or not. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.